Hello there, this is Joy News Today. My name is Mama V. Obadja. Coming up in the next 60 minutes, some public institutions and offices turn away scores of persons accessing their premises this morning for failure to show proof of their vaccination status. We'll hear from some affected individuals as the no vaccination, no entry policy bites hard. Also, prices of goods will double. Guta warns government against reversal of benchmark value as the policy takes effect today, January 4. We'll hear from Guta. And scores of youth in the La Wireless area protest alleged sale and repurposing of some aviation lands, including a community park. We'll take you live to the demonstration uh, site for the very latest. We've got business, sports, world news and some show business all coming up in this package. Do stay with us. Now, scores of people are being turned away from accessing public offices for failure to show proof of their vaccination status. Last month, the Ghana Health Service announced a no vaccination, no entry policy to be accompanied by mandatory vaccination in January 2022. On the first working day in the year, Joy News Checks reveal a strict enforcement of the directive at government offices. Here are some of the affected persons speaking to Joy News earlier. I'm from Achimoda. I'm here to deliver a letter to the receptionist. And when I came, they said I'm not having a the card. The card is not with me. The vaccine card is not with me, so they will not allow me to go inside. But I'll be begging all around by store. So I don't know what to do. So the only thing is I'll go back and bring it. And then, I got to see the notice that um, no vaccination, no entry. So I decided to step back since I've not done my vaccination yet. So I didn't have a card. So I came from Kaswa to the Ridge, as in like the Ministry of Health premises. But then due to no vaccination card, I can't enter. So I have to go back home and get vaccinated and cover the card. So you're going to get vaccinated? I'll get it, but like I wanted to do it because I wasn't having time to go for the but then now I see I have to get get it by force. <laughs> I see. So if there was a you know vaccination point here, you would have taken a vaccine. Probably, but there's none here. I don't think there's any here. So. We got here this morning and we learned that you can't enter. And here's the case that some of us bought boats Uber from far place to the side, and spending our transportation, our money from that place to the side with no. So we would like them to in bring it everyone that in case maybe you are going to an office, either Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance, or any of the ministries, you go with your uh, COVID card so that it won't be like the way I was did. We spent our transportation with no benefits. Actually, we weren't aware of it. Yeah, if we were, we were informed. You would have come with it. You weren't aware. Yeah. I have the, yeah, I, I've done the second job. So I'm okay with this. If I had a card. But I can't, I don't know why the insist that you've been, and I've been here several times. I've been here several times last year. If it's a policy this year that they've introduced, then it's up to them. But last year when I came, in, in all my transactions, then they never reserve for any, any vaccination card. If last year they insist, then I have found this year. Brought it. You, you, you don't know where you place your... I can't, but I know I have. Look, I asked me this health. They, if they have a means of telling their people, if I can go to the, the clinic at the ministry, because that's where I took my job. If I can go there, my records are there. They should give me the card. He said, That's what you I don't know. The only person is to tell people. Was 
Now, a group calling itself the La Concerned Youth Association has petitioned the La Dadekotopon Municipal Assembly to intervene in the sale and redevelopment of the aviation lands, including a cluster of football parks. The group alleges that the Council of Elders, without consulting them, has sold the land to a private entity. They are particularly aggrieved over the sale of the football park. They want the assembly to immediately reverse the sale and the entire La civil aviation lands. My colleague Michael Ni Ashali is with the demonstrators and joins us live with more. Michael, what's the status of uh, that demonstration? Is it still ongoing? Uh, well, yes, just uh, a few minutes ago, the police was here um, to disperse uh, the crowd here. So the protest, what we understand, started some uh, minutes ago. Uh, I beg your pardon, early in the morning, somewhere 6 a.m., um, they picketed on this um, plot of land here uh, that you can see in the shot where hundreds of people were picketing here. Um, from here, they all marched to the La Dadikutupon Municipal Assembly where Honorable Solomon Kutinikwe is the MC. So they took a petition um, to him. At the heart of the issues that you are raising is that this land here um, is one of the biggest football parks in the La community and serves hundreds of people um, every day. Many of them are footballers or people who are interested in playing football, uh, of which children, uh, of which uh, uh, elderly also come here to play football and sometimes funerals are also held here. Uh, but for what you can see here, um, the earth has been dug out uh, for redevelopment to happen here. Uh, we've been talking to some of them and they clearly are not happy about the situation. All they want is that this plot of land, away from the aviation lands that were released to the elders some years ago, should be left alone. Uh, but the others can be uh, um, developed uh, per the direction of the Council of Elders. But they only want the football park to be left alone. They are definitely not happy about it. So, uh, Mamavi, that is what has been happening here. Uh, the crowd, I can tell you now, has been dispersed by the police. Response from the Assembly. Well, so, yes, we're talking to the Assembly, and uh, the Assembly tells us that, well, mainly they have not had a hand in the decisions that are taken over this plot of land. The land was released to the Council of Elders after uh, years of deliberation with government. Uh, but what the assurance that he's giving to the agitating youth is that what well, they've received the petition and will try as much as possible to look into the allegations that they have raised and again also call for a consultative between, meeting between the Council of Elders and the aggrieved parties. And then the Assembly will also come in to advise the feuding parties on what next to do. He also assured the residents that while well, the Assembly has taken steps to construct some astrotefs which we made available to the residents if football is what they want and finally did the youth uh, also give any deadlines is there a time frame within which they are hoping that the issues can be addressed yeah for, for now they haven't given any uh, um, timelines to when they want their issues to be addressed but they tell me that this is not going to be the last of such protests here. They are interested in making sure that their demands are met and whatever means possible, and these are the way, whatever means possible, we would have to use to make sure that their concerns are addressed, they will resort to that. But definitely, violence is not one of them that they're going to be counting on anytime soon. Michael Nia, Shali, my colleague there reporting live from La, away from issues related to land. And the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, is warning that prices of goods will increase significantly if government reverses the reduction of values of selected items. According to the association, the benchmark value was the only straw businesses were holding on to. The warning follows a statement issued by the Ghana Revenue Authority, which announced that effective today, January 4, benchmark values will be reversed for some 43 selected items. The reversal will affect the selected items from all the three categories on which it was applied. First, uh, or first vice chairman of Guta, Clement Boating, 
in an interview with Israel Lai on the AM show, warned the implementation is not a good move. We are not against the industrialization agenda of the government. But, you know, what we are telling the government to do is to hasten slowly. Currently, we all know that our industries don't have the capacity, you know, to meet the demands of the Ghanaians. And so, therefore, we want the government to hasten slowly. At least we should all come to, you know, a round table discussion and then look at the areas that they can be able, you know, to meet the local demand. We can maybe take about one, two, three items. Then we pilot on that. You see, but to bandit about 42 items and say that you are reversing the policy is very inimical, you know, to business. That is the point that we are making. We are not against, you know, the industrialization agenda of the government because we know that at least we must start from somewhere and then progress gradually until we are self-sufficient. But we could all bear the verse that currently the situation that we are, our local manufacturers cannot meet the country's demand. And so therefore, if you say you are banded about 42 items and then reversing the policy, hey, my brother, it is inimical to business. And let me tell you, government currently, we are, we are, we are having a, a, a double digit uh, inflation. Is it not it? And government's aim is to try as much as possible to achieve a single digit. Now, with the reversal of this policy, I can tell you it is going to be difficult for government to achieve its single-digit inflation because prices are going to rise. Prices are going to rise. You bear with me that this Christmas, people were saying that prices are too high and therefore uh, traders <laughs> were complaining that uh, the, the, uh, the, the, their goods you know, were not being, you know, Patronize. It will not be patronized because, one, currently the situation that we find ourselves is very difficult. Prices of freight have gone up astronom astronomically. Uh, world commodity prices have gone up. Our city also, you know, uh, is not performing, you know, as, as, as it, it used to be. So coupled with all these facts, make prices, you know, higher. And with the reversal of this policy, Prices are going, you know, to, 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 to be maybe two or threefold. Well, economist at the University of Ghana, Professor Lord Mensa, has been explaining reasons which might be accounting for the implementation of the policy at this particular time of the year. The government had an objective for introducing these uh, subsidies, or let me call it a cut in tariffs. And these objectives, one of them is to probably increase more imports. And then secondly, the imports must be targeted towards maybe uh, goods that are coming to serve as probably an input to the economic activities of this country. And then also, you look at the local manufacturer side. I mean, you realize that any time, you know, you reduce tariffs, it encourages more import and if you encourage more import what is going to happen is that price the tendency of you know coming down and when price comes down the local manufacturers probably may not be able to afford to produce at that lower price and therefore knocking them off business and that is why you see that conflict between the two parties that you mentioned earlier and so this is, you know, bound to happen in every environment where, you know, you allow imports to come and compete with local manufacturing, you know, product. Now, let's look at how the government made the U-turn. And I will always say that, you know, some of the policies that are being rolled out by government are normally politically motivated than economic. Okay. Because, you know, Explain. In, 20, in 2019, you know, at the time that this policy was being introduced, government, you know, desperation for revenue generation was there. It was clearly on the grounds that, okay, fine, we had borrowed up to a point where we need money. So I did not support this idea of, you know, discounting import. Yeah. Exactly. I did not support, not that necessarily the reversal, but then 
you know, um, reducing the import as of that time in 2019. Yeah. I wasn't in favor of it. Because, you know, when you wear the appetite of the importer, after a certain time and you want to remove it, it becomes a problem. Because it gives that kind of laxity into the local system to which, you know, um, the effort that we need to uh, I mean, move towards production will, te will tend to be reducing. So at a point in time where you have some way, somehow, you know, production capacity and you want to reduce it, people's appetite have already been developed in importation. And as a result of that, you will start getting this conflict. Now, President Akufuado says his government is committed to making more investment in education to reform the country. According to him, a 95% increase in education investment has been achieved under his tenure. Speaking at the Quadrino National Delegates Conference of NAT in Kumasi, he wants teachers to complement the efforts of government. The president also revealed measures are in place to construct over 10,000 homes for teachers. My colleague Nanaya Ojima joins us with the very latest on this. Nanaya, what was the teacher's reaction to the new homes that are to be built for them? Most of the teachers here believe it's a step in the right direction, and this is long over. It's one of the issues that consistently they've engaged government on. For instance, today when the General Secretary of NAS was speaking, it was the first challenge that she brought up. So for government to respond in this manner to them, it's encouraging. But the challenge is how many uh, homes that government is building for these teachers. Um, President emphatically mentioned but that by the in the next few years he is expecting his government to at least build ten thousand homes for these teachers and most of them believe these the, the number is inadequate and even the president emphasized that this number is inadequate but um, it is the beginning of greater income. And Anaya, what more has the president been saying at this conference beyond building homes for teachers? So the president has been speaking about living conditions of teachers, and he says that um, he is aware of the challenges of the teachers, and his government already has started some um, policy to ensure that um, teachers um, get better remuneration. For instance, today the minister for labour and labour relations mentioned that government. Um, from this year, when she... through his or her salary alone. Unfortunately, we cannot imagine such a scenario for today's newly qualified teachers or even teachers who are near retirement. This is not good enough. And that is why my government remains committed to improving the circumstances of our teachers. We believe that teaching should not be seen as a stopgap measure or a job of last resort, but as a viable choice to enter a well-respected profession with positive long-term career prospects and good benefits. We have restored since coming into office five years ago and continue to pay teacher trainee allowances, which were abolished by the previous administration. In addition to the yearly average increase in salaries over the last five years, my government is for the first time in our nation's history paying a professional allowance to teachers. We have ab abolished the three months pay policy for teachers. We have cleared the arrears and pro <laughs> Let me repeat, we have cleared the arrears. Promotions to teachers have also been effected. Furthermore, last year, the Ghana Education Service introduced the use of an aptitude test for teachers at the pre-tertiary level. 
A total of 46,273 teachers sat for the aptitude test, out of which 29,465, i.e. 63.6%, were successful. To prevent undue delays in, in promotion of qualified teachers, government will in 2022 improve on the conduct of the aptitude test, leveraging on lessons learned from the one conducted in 2021. At the start of the 2018-2019 academic year, all colleges of education were upgraded to university colleges. A four-year Bachelor of Education B.Ed. degree has been introduced in the University College of Education. This means that soon, a first degree will be the minimum requirement for teaching at any level of the education system. Meanwhile, Santa Hineo Tunfo said to the second is asking teachers, the Education and Employment Ministries, to resort to the use of dialogue to reduce industrial actions. He says not only are students at the receiving end of such frequent actions, but they are also affected uh, in terms of their education in general. Speaking at the 7th Quadrennial National Delegates Conference of NATS, the Asante Hene urged teacher unions and government to use consultative dialogue to build consensus to eliminate frequent industrial actions. It does get truly disconcerting when industrial relations break down in education and teachers abandon their classrooms and lecture halls. Obviously, those who really suffer in this are the innocent children. The distress caused to the poor students in any industrial action is incalculable. I urge you all to focus your minds on the need for an improved formula of negotiations and consultations, which will minimize, if not eliminate, any recourse to industrial action with harmful consequences upon our children. As we seek the best from our teachers, so our teachers must be made to feel truly valued. Zero. Though impressed by the positive impact of free senior high school, the overlord of the Ashanti Kingdom wants Ghana's educational system streamlined to stimulate creativity and innovation. In the new digital age, Asia is out here competing with the West for global economic superiority. They have done this through an educational system designed to stimulate creativity and innovation, to produce creators and inventors. By contrast, our educational system has turned us into a vast expanding marketplace of consumers of other people's creations. So, painful as it may be, we have to start asking why we are still crawling through months of refuse, unable to solve the simplest environmental challenges on Mother Earth. The number of the challenges to change from an educational system for double consumers to a system focused on creativity and innovation. A system no. geared to produce inventors and creators so our nation too can find its proper place in this age of science and technology. No. Keynote speaker and former Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast, Reverend Professor Emmanuel Obeyado, admitted continuous use of force by NAT over the period to drum home their demands from government have yielded no results. According to him, such politically tainted approaches are no longer effective means of negotiations. Reverend Professor Obeyado wants teacher associations to hone their negotiation skills. So I wish to submit that. The way that will make the association reliable, vibrant, and attractive lies in knowledge creation and acquisition. Effective and wide use of technology, continuous professional development in all relevant areas of the association's ambit to enhance skills of members to negotiate, dialogue, and perform at peak levels so as to become essential part of any decision and policy making process in the country. From Kumasi for Joy News, Emmanuel Bradsquake reporting. Let's now talk about our finances at the beginning of a new year. In case you do not know what to do anytime you return from a Christmas break, very broke, here are some tips to help you become financially independent. Uh, Paul Mante is a financial 
Well, he's actually the managing director of EDC Investment. He's been encouraging salary earners to consider investment and alternative sources of income as the way out. He spoke on Joy FM's Super Morning Show today. When we talk about financial independence, we're basically talking about getting to that stage in life where you can sustain your desired lifestyle without salary. It does not mean you don't need to work, but you get to that point in time. You work because you want to work. If you don't work, you still live the life you want to live. That is financial independence. And it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, two days ago, uh, I got a call in the evening from a teacher who said, look, uh, our school had a retreat some five years ago and you came to talk to us and i took it serious this is a teacher who is on a salary of about three thousand five hundred or three thousand eight hundred cities but wasting as uh, the, the man called me uh, um two days ago his investment had crossed six hundred thousand mm. so he says look i am a teacher my salary is less than four thousand but at the moment i am making monthly interest of eight thousand cities so my monthly interest at the moment, Paul, is more than double of my salary. But it's not been easy. I had to tighten my seatbelt. So planning, it's, it's not a walk in the park. It's not going to be easy. But the, for me, the, the, the big motivation is the why you need to do it. If the why is strong enough, you'll be motivated um, to tighten the belt and cut down on the outflows as much as possible so that you will be able to raise uh, 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 the money you need for the future salary is the medicine for managing poverty salary does not cure poverty it's only investment or a business that will cure poverty but we can all run a business but everybody can invest once your the, the kind of work you do allows you to do some side hustle. Mm. Do you do something in addition? Mm. Multiple streams of income. Okay. If you cannot make extra money by a, a side hustle, then I would say at least invest. Investment will give you some investment income in addition to your regular salary. I know a banker who is also a DJ. You know, so people do other things in addition to the regular eight to five if you don't push yourself Charlie another two years another three years we'll be having this conversation mm. and we wouldn't have made any headway in in, in the year 2006 wasting I sat down with my wife I said look let's look at our finances and I'm being practical here we look at all our assets we look at all our liabilities and then we realize the liabilities were higher than the assets Mm. If you put the value of the liabilities together, they were higher than the asset. And believe you me, Mama V, there are a number of people walking in town, driving vehicles, who have never sat down to uh, uh, go through this analysis. Let's look at the value of our asset. Let's look at the value of our liabilities. Let's take the liabilities out of the asset. Let's look at what the net position would. The point I'm making is we need to sit down. This is January. As you plan into the year and beyond uh, 2022 sit down and pay attention to your finances because money is everybody's business everybody must major money whether you're a teacher you're a pastor you're an engineer you're a dj whatever money is everybody's yes, business and it was all joy as hundreds of families assembled at the ratry park for a fun-filled love insurer fm family party in the park the events parked with games, arts and dancing sessions for children and their parents lived up to the bill of fostering and renewing family bonds. Love FM's Mona Lisa Frimpong was at the event and now reports. Welcome to the Kumase Rotary Park where the 2022 edition of the Love FM Fry Tall Family Party in the Park is happening. Well, when I got here, I was taken aback a little because of the number of people here. This place is absolutely choked. Now, you can see lots of families around, and I'm walking up to a number of them to speak to them. Hello, mommy. How are you? And I can see you are really having fun. So what made you choose no other exciting place to be other than this particular place? Oh, we love our own. And we cherish as well. That's why we are here today. And then many a J, many a J pa, I will run to pack. Game say what I know. My man in Timbuktu in Diagro no. My man I come in Wasi I know. And I'm in the Wadu my friends so bad. I'm in the Wakasi. I'm in the Wadu my new one. I'm in the Wadu my new one. I'm in the Wadu my new one. 
so ya sum jam, sa so ya sum jamba, ya bay any say ya fibia, but what you say ya party as a shadow sun, yeah this uh actually I don't have kids, but you know how the environment be, you know. I think next year I will impregnate four kids, hey, four ladies, and I'll have four kids. Well, I'm next to the trampoline stand where a lot of children are trying to get in. So this place is packed. And a horse just passed by. I mean, it's quite brave of the children to actually be riding a horse this big. My name is Queen Savre Fianami. And it's so funny when I was riding the horse and I was playing. Have you gone up and down the tunnel? Yeah. And how was it feeling like? Weren't you scared? In first, I was scared, but well, the second time in those things, I wasn't scared. When we reached at that corner there, I was scared. I thought I was going to fall out, but it was not like that. When I came back, it was like, hey, this one is fun, Papa. So you have seen the fun, everything exciting. Family party in the park is happening. I so badly want a 2023 edition of this particular program to be held. From Kumasi for Joy News, Mona Lisa from Porn Reporting. Oh, you're watching Joy News today. We'll take a breather. We will come uh, by with business, and Daryl Call has got all the details. Stay with us. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. A year since the implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, stakeholders believe it is a key to economic freedom of all African nations. Commenting on the prospects of the Trade Pact Head of Strategic Communications at Ghana's Coordination Office for AFTA, Catherine Afeku, urged traders on the continent to take keen interest in the deal and support its implementation. The former Minister of Tourism also disclosed that more than half of AU member countries have ratified the deal, giving it a significant push for the continent. It is now all of a sudden not for the 16 regions in Ghana, but for 1.2 billion people. So the essence of AFTA is really to engineer, so to speak, Africans to trade amongst themselves. Now, that doesn't mean that we are not trading with our external partners, but we are focusing on trading amongst ourselves. And the statistics are there to support. If you look at trade amongst intra-African trade, it's very, very low. But we trade more with Asia, with Europe, with the Americas than ourselves. And there are reasons why it hasn't been as robust as you would expect by a lot of impediments. So AFTA comes in at the right time to set up a framework that there is a permanent secretariat. It's set up in Ghana, uh, 54 African countries. Ratification is ongoing, but over half have already ratified, signed the protocols. And now, officially, January 2021, trade began. So I think it's, it's, it's a new epoch for Africa. You know, we've had the 60s independent struggle, you have a lot of euphoria, countries are liberating politically. Now we're doing the economic freedom. So that is really the essence. For me, if you ask, what is it? You, you have to look back. Those who were born that time will tell you with nostalgia when Africa was coming out of colonial yoke. Now those of us now will also talk a generation later, it will be in history books that the time African people decided to do the economic liberation. That was the time we were involved. So that's what after, for me, if you ask, that's what it's intra-African trade solidified with an AU secretariat. And we will have more on one year of after on the marketplace that's at the top of the R. Now, Joy Business is promising to deepen our outreach programs to reach the many less privileged in society. According to the head, Odilia Ntiamwa, Joy Business will continue to spread love, particularly to Ghanaians who are in need. 
Now, speaking at the maiden edition of the Joy Business Outreach at the Agbogulish Market, Mrs. Ntianwa said the outreach will be done on a yearly basis to support residents from less endowed societies. Thousands of people, mainly women and children, thronged the forecourt of the Sikkim's office in Agbubulushi to partake in the street breakfast edition of the Joy Business Outreach Program. Items such as drinks, rice, bread, chicken, toffees, among others, were distributed to them. Head of Joy Business, Odilia Ntiamwa, explained the reason for this initiative. This year, we decided as Joy Business to send some love and compassion to our less privileged brothers and sisters by offering them breakfast. We know that during this Christmas season, many people will eat some very good food, but these are people who will not get the opportunities all of us have gotten. So we got the business community, Valley View University, um, Teka, which gave us drinks, and then um, another company gave us chicken for us to be able to prepare some good breakfast for them. And that's exactly why we are here. Every year we plan to do different things for the less privileged community. This year we decided to do breakfast. Ne that's 2022. At the end of the year, it may be a different plan, but it's definitely going to target the less privileged in society. Joy Business's project lead, Emily Josu, described the program as successful. It's been overwhelming so far, but we are trying to manage the crowd. I mean, that's the little we have, and we want to share the joy of the Christmas um, um, festivities and New Year with the people of Agbogloshi. So, I mean, we don't have much, but that's what we are trying to share. It's been hectic, but we are trying our best to control the crowd and make sure that everybody gets a bite of what we brought here today. So, I mean, so far so good, it's been successful, and we thank God that we've been able to do this as a team. One of the leaders of the community, Mohamed Sallisu, on behalf of his members, expressed their gratitude to Joy Business. Well, we, are, we are very grateful for their coming. And in fact, you can see the crowds, we are able to manage them nicely. We are able to manage the crowd nicely. I and my brother, Mutaru. My name is Swalisu. So we are representing the community to manage the car, to help your people to distribute items for them. And we are most grateful for what you have done for the Kaya people. Nets and mothers were not left out of the program as bags of rice were given to them to cater for those at home. The first edition of the Joy Business Outreach was partnered by Thaka Overseas, Charlie Boy Enterprise, Valley View University Bakery, and the Ghana Commodities Exchange. And 2022, we aim to prosper together. That's business. You can check out our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business for more. Up next, Sports with Muftal. Time now for sports. On Joy News today with me, Muftar Odabila Ablai, Ghana head coach Milovan Ryvak has named Mohamed Kudus in his final squad for the African Cup of Nations. The Serbian, who named a 30-man provisional squad in December, has pruned the squad to 28, having camped in Doha since December 23, 2021. Roma youngster Felix Afinajan and Clement defender Salis Abdul Samet, are the players dropped from the list? We take a look at the full squad that are the likes of Andre Ayo, his younger brother Jordan Ayo, Thomas Pate, and co. All available for the competition. Number one is Nuruddin Abdul Manaf and Andrew Chia Yadom. There's also Fulmont Baffo. He will be wearing the famous jersey that have served the country in many tournaments 
and this JC was won by Asamoachan. That is the number three JC. Number four is going to be Jonathan Mensah. Thomas Tay Pate is where number five JC. Edmond Ado is where number six. Number seven will be won by uh, Abdul Fatahu is Sahaku. Number eight is Daniel Chue. Number nine is Jordan Ayu. Number 10 is Andre Ayu. Number 11, Wakaso Mubarak. Number 12 is Lawrence Tatizigi. Number 13 is Richmond Boachi Yadom. Number 14, Gideon Mensah. 15 is Joseph Pencil. 16, Joseph Wallacott. 17 is Baba Rahman. Uh, 18 is Daniel Amate. Number 19 is Samuel Owusu. Number 20, Mohamed Kudus. He's uh, currently training with his team in Portugal as they are continuing their preparations for the second round of the uh, Dutch League. Number 21 is Idrisu Baba Mohamed. Number 22 is Kamaldin Suleimana. 23 is Richard Atta. 24, 20, 23 is Alexander Ejiku. 24 is Shara Richard Atta. And 25, Benjamin Tete. 26 is Abdul Mumin Suleiman. 27 is Maxwell Abekwe of Great Olympics. And 28 as David Abagna Sandan of RTU. And still on the Black Stars, former Black Stars defender John Pencil has cut doubt on Milovan Rivers ability to end Ghana's 40 year of failure to win the African Cup of Nations. According to him, the list of 28 players he's put together for a tournament, which starts in the next five days, does not have the required experience to annex the title. Yeah, I think I saw it was a bit crucial for him, and it was a wrong timing. Uh, I seen he coming, he's not coming to meet the players that he met before. And of course, when he came, some of us were already made. The team has been there 2006, 2008. So he, when he came 2010, we were masters of our own and we will take instructions. But now that generation is not there anymore. When you look at the team now, we only have uh, Dede Ayu and Jonathan Mensah, which is not enough for any coach who believe that this is the national team that I enjoy coaching. Milo came because he loved Ghanaians and he knew that Ghanaian players would deliver for him. In some cases, no coach would have come and take the job in that crucial moment because it's Ghana we are talking about. It's not any country that don't love football. Ghana, we love football, we love football with everything. So I believe that Milo came because he loved the nation and he believed that Ghanaian players always deliver for him. So. I said it was a crucial and wrong time for him because of the players he was coming to meet, players who have never been together, play so much uh, matches, thinking that they have that uh, quality as a team, but they have quality as individuals. It was going to be uh, difficult for him. But in all, when you look at what he has done for this short period, that tells you that uh, he's a great coach. Do you have any confidence? in him uh, going into the AFCON and uh, qualifying Ghana for the World Cup? He's my coach. I always have confidence in him. Um, me saying uh, it, was, it was crucial and a wrong time for him to come, yeah, I think I'm right to say it. But having confidence in him that he can deliver, of course, yes. That is your sports for now, but we do have more sports stories on my joyonline.com. I am Muftar Nabila Abdullah. Good afternoon, welcome to Showbiz here on Joy News. Now it's a start of a new year, and some players in the entertainment industry have. Uh, many plans as they look forward to a fulfilling season. Ms. V, Kwesiata, Edem, Efia, Yapono, and others have been sharing their resolutions with Joy News. Yeah, it's my 10 years in the music industry, and I'm turning 30. So next year is going to be crazy. <laughs> music wise, I've not been on my toes, but you know, in 2022, like people will see a lot of progress in the music side. Yeah, I'm working on, I've already, I'm, I'm done with three albums. Um, the problem now is which one to release. Yeah, so you have the 6995 album, the live album and then the loop album. And um, 
you see, for some time now, you've seen me play with gadgets on stage. So just be on the lookout. Um, I think I'm always one of the few to start new things in this game. And you'll definitely be seeing more of that. What I really rely on is life. And so every year that I have life, I'm very grateful because life is what makes every other thing meaningful. So I'm grateful to be here. Do you have any expectations for 2022? I put all my expectation in my maker because I can I can propose, but he will dispose. But all I can say that God's grace has been favorable. I know. You know the thing is, we're working on something amazing, and as soon as like it becomes what it is going to become, you guys are gonna love it. I would say. I've been working on the project for a while now, you Bob. So because of that, I haven't really been like out there, out there. But yeah, Charlie, 2022, a shower season. So we go there everywhere. Yeah, grr. Yeah, I have a lot of projects I'm, I'm bringing up. It's charity shows, charity programs to bring. I want, I don't want to say anything. I want them to recognize me with a lot of, a lot of young talents have blown in Ghana and mostly are done underground work. So I, I simply want to. You know, elevate that and make it happen. That's for showbiz. Yeah, I can't wait for this. You said what, 26th of January? Yes, this uh, on Lifetime. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, we'll look out for that. Becky, thanks for show business. Yeah. Indeed, that's it for sh uh, Joy News today. My name is Mama Vigo Swabwaji. Thank you very much for watching. On behalf of the team, uh, we thank you. And there's more news on myjoyline.com.